inside. And whatever you see the outside, that is what is inside. So, now, if that is, okay, the reality, and so we understand that human, among all the, in the animal kingdom, we are the rational one, we are the most deceptive of all. <laughs> you see from the outside, but it's not the inside. You hear something like this, but it is not true the inside. Huh? And you can manipulate words, what is so easily uh, manipulated. So at least we stop and think about what is the truth. When can or when will we live the truth and have no fear? Because we have, we have a lot of fear, fear of getting hurt, fear of suffering. That uh, suppose I tell the truth, right? And I'm going to be in trouble. So I will just water it down. I just say, or I just, you know, kind of uh, swerve to something else, right? Exaggerate, or somehow. Okay, that's what we are. So we know we are not truthful many a times to ourselves. But we know what is true. In the, our heart of hearts, we know what is true. Whatever is inside has to be outside. And the only person who did that, who was that, Whatever he was outside, it is exactly what is inside. And whatever is inside, it is exactly what is outside. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's the truth. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us the sermon to know the one who is true. No matter what you do to me, you can bring me to court. Okay, you could accuse me, however, okay, there are some like half truths about what you accuse me, but the conclusion is not, is, is wrong. Okay. And then uh, and we are in the one who is true. We are in the one who is true. In his son Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. So eternal life is truth because it's impossible to kill the truth. Impossible. No matter what you do to it, it just is. No matter how powerful you are, the, the truth speaks, uh, you whisper the truth, is still the truth. Okay? So that's what we are doing with this spiritual exercise, revealing the truth. The truth is setting us free with the holy name Jesus Christ. Now, let us go a little bit deeper. What is this truth? We come to the realization that the truth is whatever is outside has to be inside, inside, you know, uh, exposing ourselves exactly as it is outside, inside, correspond, they correspond to each other. So we need to know the truth about what am I, okay, what am I, what you are. So the best thing is to go the negative way, what I am not, or what is not mine, what is not mine. What does not me? That's what you do. So you go the opposite, you go the negative way. So you look around and you ask yourself, what is not mine? And you keep asking and you go deep down and you see. You ask yourself, is this earth mine? Is this life mine? Really? If you, it is yours, then you are the owner of it. What do you mean, John? <laughs> okay. So, what is not mine? And then you go back, oh, is my home, my house, mine? <coughs> is it yours, really? <laughs> if it is yours, then it should be yours forever. Right? After you die, who is going to take over it? If you don't pay the you know, mortgage and everything else, you know, you, somebody's gonna pull it. <coughs> so, and you look around your family, okay? And you have your husband, your wife, your children. And you look at that man, you think that man, that husband of yours is yours. Are you sure that man is yours? Love, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> if, if he is yours, then you have total control over him. You have total
total control over him. <laughs> and you don't have total control over him, then that partly his his partly yours. But completely. And if you know you look at that, you know, in the list in a practical way, yeah. So we think we get married and we're in a family and all those things and we own sure. And even you look into yourself, this body of mine, is it mine? <laughs> it's made up of water, 78% is water. Where does the water come from? How much air in it? A lot of hot air. <laughs> a lot of hot air. Depends on the individual. <laughs> Some have more. So, how much, is, what is yours, you know? What is really yours? You, you, and then, well, if it's yours and it should be yours forever, but you know, well, this is the truth. I look at my body when you're young and you keep growing and this is that way, and then suddenly one day you notice that it does not heal as quick as it used to be. And when it cuts, oh, it remains cutting, you know, for a long time, and it won't grow. It doesn't grow anymore. <coughs> and the reality is, that, uh, oh, this body is going, you know, it's going down, it's corrupting, while I'm still living. So it, it is the reality. So I'm losing it. So every moment as I speak to you right now, do you understand, do you see the reality behind? You are losing your body. You try to use all kind of lotion. <laughs> Still, <laughs> try all kind of uh, dyeing hair, dyeing. You, you dye your hair, Chan? No. Okay, that's good. That was it's all natural. Medication. Uh, okay. Then I want to quit the medication. My hair came back. Okay, very good. Good for you. <laughs> so you are the honest man. Huh? So you see, when, when we lose it, we lose it. Slowly, slowly. It means this. This is the, the truth here. This body. Really ours. If it is ours, this my body, then I should have total control over it. But sometimes it does something I I'm not in charge. Huh? You look at, at your body as well. Okay, so you look at it that way and you say, okay. So what is going with going on with this body? It is truly dying, it is truly corrupting. You can replenish it with water and with food and with the medicine and all those things. Still, slowly, the rate of its dying, death, is quicker than the rate of its growth. When you reach a certain point of growth, right? You're going down. Mm -hmm. And this is not morbid, this is not negative at all. It's just reality. And you try to hold on to it, ah, you are untrue. You cannot hold on to what is not yours. What is not yours? Oh, it's not mine. So render what is it? Not, that is not mine, so I should not keep it. I keep it just like I, I, I keep charcoal in my hand. It's not mine. I slip away. Right? So the reality, it teaches us this. I am really inside this dead because it's dying. It is so hard to hear this. So hard. And if you are in this dead body, like Paul said, literally, that means you're dead. So, what are you? Oh, you're not nothing. So, now, when we think about the things we cannot control, we do not have, we do not own, and we start to feel, we give our, you know, the interpretation and the conclusion that oh, I'm so terrible and all those things, and we suffer. And we become, we become hopeless because of our interpretation, because of our opinions, okay? Opinions is the cause of all suffering, okay? Does it make sense? It is what it is, and it's it, oh, I'm a terrible person. No, 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 no. It is what it is. It doesn't mean you're terrible. It is what it is. And so I acknowledge it. Doesn't mean I accept it. I will not accept it. That's why we have hope for salvation. Now, the Almighty 
did something. He said, okay, this is the situation that you are, so we enter, I decided that I will enter into your dying, dead, you know, human nature, into this corrupting flesh. I'm going to enter into it. I'm going to give you me. I'm going to give you me. Not something, but someone. Mm. That is a mystery of the incarnation. The mind cannot grasp the, the, the mind that grasps the external knowledge cannot really comprehend this. Because yesterday I mentioned about there's external knowledge and the internal and eternal knowledge. We have a lot of knowledge about the world and things outside of us, but we do not stop to get to know ourselves. Remember the internal, eternal knowledge. And also many things, the people, politics, cultures, languages, but when it comes to me, I'm a little bit really ignorant too about myself. What is the inner working of this me, which is a mystery to me. I feel like, uh, you know, Bob Dylan, he got the Nobel Prize Award. Oh, I cannot be anybody except me, but I don't know who I am. I, you know, so I cannot be anybody else except me, but I don't even know what am I. So, but still, it's a mystery. So, this this mystery, me, and then I'm losing in this short time. I'm living here, and this this little tiny body is make up of stardust, like uh, Carl Sagan, <laughs> just a little, and then gone in a blink of an eye. Hundred years, no more. But why? And that with this, we, we hold on to this blink of an eye, and we're gone. We're holding on to it, and we suffer for it. And the Lord laughs and he says, "Okay, I'm going to enter into that blink of an eye, that bubble of your body, you know, corrupting body. I'm going to enter into it, and I'm going to I'm not going to use hundred years. I I will use only thirty years." into that uh, chunk of, of uh, flour and that is you know, like that he does that 33 years and look at what's going on in the world today it's, you know, it's growing 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 inside humanity and nothing can stop him nothing can stop the truth hmm. he can try to kill 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 even you proclaim God is dead whatever The truth is silent, ultimately. You know, it's a Christmas mystery. A lot of silence is in it. Joseph was silent. Mary was silent. The shepherd, only the baby couldn't talk, silent. The, you don't hear the, the, the magi say, say the word. But, you know, just, just silent when you, you meet this eternal God, and which is your internal reality. And there's only something so awful and awesome, really awful, which is mystery, and it's awesome. It's beyond fear. Awe is beyond fear. And so you can remain silent, and you just soak in. And this is what we do with this spiritual exercise. Huh? We, we allow the holy name, a name above all names, to enter into ourselves. And we think we soak in him, but in fact, he is soaking out us into him. And whatever he does, he's going to do it. He's going to, he's recreating, I mean, literally, he's recreating us. Literally. Hmm. Now, with, only with the holy name, okay? We're not talking about the, the precious blood and the sacred body yet. Okay? But because of this holy name, he's going to bring us. He's going to soak us and, and suck us into him and he bring us into the heart and then he's going to immerse us into that precious blood and that 